Yeah, we're at the track covering the sport of kings. Coming up this week, a rich high energy Caymanis Park race day highlighted by Horse of the Year Atomica's explosive win in the Jamaica Cup. Top rated mahogany, unstoppable in the Port Royal Sprint. Undefeated foreigner desert of Malibu in the St. Elizabeth Distaff. American commentator Peter Yellow also grabbing some of the spotlight. And the man you can't keep out of the news, Barbadian jockey Patrick Husbands with another stakes win at Canada's Woodbine. Plus the weekly stats on Caribbean success on the North American continent, our opening story from Jamaica. Where Saturday's main event was the Jamaica Cup at a purse of $6 million. That's just about $38,400 US dollars. The third richest race on the Caymanis Park calendar behind the Mute Mile and the Derby. The Oak Ridge Farms brilliant filly and horse of the year, Atomica, the big favorite with champion jockey Dane Dawkins riding for trainer Gary Sabrati. Number one, Runaway Algo and the two horse Blue Vinyl, the joint second favorites at 8 to 5. The 2021 Jamaica Cup winner, Further and Beyond, unfancied at 16 to 1. The betting really loving Atomica, eyeing a repeat Jamaica Cup win. The odds on favorite at 3 to 5 for this major prep for December's Mute Mile. In the com box, as usual, Jamaican ace Bran Rickman, but this time sharing the duties with visiting voice of Florida's Gulfstream Park, Pete Ayello. And they're off in the third running of the Jamaica Cup. From the fence, Runaway Algo comes out firing. And in hand, second is Blue Vinyl. And up to third goes Atomica. Away in fourth is further in beyond. Second last early to head Cornerstone. And Miniature Man is last of the half dozen as they charge into the clubhouse turn. The three favorites almost three in line with Runaway Algo holding inside position and the lead. Atomica forcing the issue three wide and Patterson has a decision to make on Blue Vinyl. Will he sit or will he go with them? He's going to go with them. So the three favorites, they drop the gloves early as they complete the opening quarter. Into the backstretch as one. It's Atomica three wide. Blue Vinyl in the two path. Runaway Algo pushing along at the inside. These three have opened a big advantage on Miniature Man outside the head cornerstone and further in beyond races between as they head to the five eights. Atomica takes the lead. She's now a neck in front of Blue Vinyl. They've gone two and a half better than Runaway Algo. It's a big gap to Miniature Man who's underway while fourth then to head cornerstone. The trailer further in beyond. As they race away now toward the final half of a mile in the Jamaica Cup and the battle up front continues. Blue Vinyl now giving way. Atomica asked to pick it up and Atomica now goes on as they leave the 7th, 16th. Blue Vinyl backing out into second. Runaway Algo needs to find six to get to Atomica. A huge gap opens up to Miniature Man, the head cornerstone and forget further and beyond as the pace increases at the 5 16th. They're coming into the lane and the super filly Atomica looking to hit. Five from five. They're coming into it now. It's Atomica. Blue Vinyl throwing the on the challenge on the outside, Atomica continues to hold the advantage in the Jamaica Cup. It's Atomica under the left hand stick, running to the furlong pole. Blue Vinyl drifting off a true line. Atomica continues to run straight and true. A furlong to catch her. Can Blue Vinyl do it? He's the only one who can. They race toward the final 16th. It is Atomica and devastating Dane Dawkins. Atomica, the nuclear powered filly, will take the third running of the Jamaica Cup by three or four of a Blue Vinyl. Just as much excitement in the com box between Rickman and a yellow as there was on the track. The four-year-old Philly Atomica, the Dab winner and horse of the year last year by nuclear Wayne out of the reparations mayor, Honky Tongville, makes it five wins in a row and repeats as a Jamaica Cup champion with an uncomplicated performance. I know it was a three last race for the first six furlongs, so it wasn't really mastering me. I just know my ass and she full up pace and I let her to run how she knew to run. When I looked on the race, um, it kind of reminded me of the derby, where I see she was very relaxed and Blue Vinyl was pushing. Um, I thought Runaway Algo would have been a lot closer um, going on by the three for a long mark, but um, he wasn't there, so I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, we have one and I'm so, so happy with that. Atomica by four lengths has the three to five favorite, clocking two minutes, three seconds even for the nine and a half furlong Jamaica Cup, chased by Blue Vinyl. 13 lifetime wins now in 17 starts for Atomica. Jockey Dane Dawkins had a triple success on the afternoon, as did trainer Gary Sabrati, and a very pleasing win as well for the groom, Lindell Bennett. The Jamaica Cup was one of three Mute Mile prep races on Saturday's card. The secondary feature Port Royal Sprint over six furlongs was an opportunity for the highly rated Mahogany to punch his Mute Mile ticket before the event below the earnings mark to qualify and the six-year-old gelding. Having stalked the pace down the backstretch, 
got a peach of a ride from Robert Hardball Halladeen. As they come thundering into the top of the lane in the third running of the Port Royal Sprint, they arrive at the 316th and over on the rail and traveling powerfully. That's Madeline Sunshine Mahogany now coming on the outside. It's Madeline Sunshine driven to the max. Mahogany right there. They make eye contact briefly and now Mahogany snatches the lead. They're inside the final 16th. It is the big horse and the favorite Mahogany coming away to win the third running of the Port Royal Sprint. On the vigorous left hand whipping, the finish. Fine for Mahogany. 17 lifetime wins now as the big chestnut racer tuned up for the Mute Mal, advertising his quality shouldering top weight of 57 kilos in a big field under Halladine's confident ride. I just had to get a good position, get a good break, and just keep him relaxed as much as possible. And I plan to ride him the last furlong because the pace he has, I don't need to rush him three furlongs, three and a half, two and a half. I can just canter in the lane and just asked him to run the last furlong, and that was the plan, and luckily everything went well. He did a great job um, with the ride today. Last year in the Mute Mile, you know, we had every chance up to the half of furlong pole. So if we can get Mahogany back to that shape, you know, he will have a look in for sure at the Mute Mile. As the one to two favorite Mahogany clocks a stakes record equaling 1 minute 12 seconds for the six furlong Port Royal Sprint, matching the time Duke ran in his 2021 victory in the event. With this big one and a quarter length victory over the spirited 25 to 1 bet, Madeline Sunshine. Second win in the event for Jockey Hallidine, who won aboard Duke two years ago. Equally impactful in a Mute Mile build up Saturday was the US bred four year old filly, Desert of Malibu, the Atomica jockey trainer combination of Dawkins for Sobrati, flawless again here in an efficient gate to wire run against a potentially tough field, watched by Peter Yellow in the com box. Desert of Malibu and Dane Dawkins get serious. They open now a length and a half on American Tap, who's angled off the inside to make her bid second. Two and a half back to Baby Lake. She's now third, driven and dropping back is Luxall. Rani Bangala has a lot to do, but she's underway. Eight lengths off the speed with five sixteenths to go. Desert of Malibu trying to stretch her speed. She's off the turn. Two lengths better than American Tap, and they start to get away from the others. Less than a quarter of a mile to come in the St. Elizabeth Distaff, and they're on their way home. Desert of Malibu. Dawkins asked her to finish what she started. She's an eighth of a mile from home, and she's still well clear. American Tap tried but couldn't get to her. Up the inside, Baby Lake running a giant race. Sister and Treasure and Outbitter are next. But inside the final 16th, she'll go four for four. She's undefeated. She's Desert of Malibu, an authoritative winner of the St. Elizabeth Distaff by five in the end. After an unplaced effort at Tampa Bay Downs in Florida, USA in February 2022, Desert of Malibu is undefeated now in four starts at Jamaica's Caymanus Park for owner Marcus Dabdub's Houston Stables. Dabdu's second St. Elizabeth Distaff win this. He was breeder of Carlton Watson's 2021 winner, Makeup Artist. A pretty quick 138 and 2 fifths the winning time for the one mile St. Elizabeth Distaff for Desert of Malibu as the 3 to 5 favorite in a six length victory over the 46 to 1 outsider, Baby Like. All that excitement and brilliance from Saturday leaving Caymanus Spark racing fans anxious for the 150,000 US dollar Mute mile on the 2nd of December. To that Patrick Husband story now from Toronto, Canada. Coming off stakes wins in September and October aboard the Kevin Attar trained fashionably fab, Husbands took the filly into Friday's Ash Bridges Bay Stakes as a second favorite. He is in the green silks here, already looking like the winner, smoothly and patiently stalking the 33 to 1 outsider, Seattle Causeway. They come down inside the three eighths and going along in front. Seattle Causeway, a length to fashionably fab. And again, taking off his great Kate behind Tito's calling, who's coming. Tito's calling the center. Very Gizmos on the inside, looking for room as they corner. Out in front on the inside, still under pressure now. Seattle Causeway headed. Fashionably fab, race clear. Coming after them on the outside, Tito's calling, but doesn't have the acceleration to match fashionably fab, who raced right away. And fashionably fab is four in front. This race is over. The Ashbridges Bay, a magnificent win by Fashionably Fab, strides on to score by six lengths. No rider at Woodbine this season has as many stakes wins as husbands, 15 so far in 2023 for the record eight-time winner of the Sovereign Award as Canada's most outstanding jockey. Fashionably Fab and husbands, six and a half lengths in front as the nine to five bet, easily topping the odds on favorite Tito's calling and stopping the clock for the eight and a half furlong Ashbridge's base stakes at 144.34.
A weekly tally of wins for Caribbean racing men in the USA and Canada before we go. The numbers significantly down with most of the Canadian tracks closing in the past month. In the past week since our last show, I've counted 19 wins. Among them, the Barbadian jockey Rocco Boyne with six wins at Mahoning Valley, including double victories on Thursday and Tuesday. And the three-time Jamaica champion jockey Anthony Thomas had a 19-to-1 shot winning on Saturday at Gulfstream Park for his third win there in Florida. That victory coming from the Jamaican trainer Matthew Williams. We've been at the track covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.